From Chaplin's silent jests to the immersive realms of Avatar, cinema leaped across a century. Like McConaughey peering into the black hole, we now gaze into the future, where AI Chaplin's
Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us for this um, well, well anticipated conversation um, with these amazing folks who are involved in AI and the filmmaking industry. My name is Sharanda Farrell. I will be guiding the proceedings for the rest of the evening, wherever you are. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we look forward to your questions or your comments. Feel free to drop it in the chat where, on whichever platform you're joining, whether it is via YouTube or it is on Facebook Live, or if it is on another platform, um, welcome. All right, so let's just dive right into it. You know, we're talking about AI and funding Jamaican films in particular, just in case you were confused, the Jamaican flag is right behind me. And just for the record, everybody on the panel um, is a Jamaican and we're all working either in AI or in the filmmaking industry or both. And as it is happening now, um, whether we like it or not, if you're in filmmaking, you're gonna have to figure out how to work in both industries. So allow me to introduce our very esteemed panel. We'll start with Charles Smart. He is AI and data strategist, um, and he is CEO and co-founder co of Metai Block. Hello, Charles, welcome, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me here. Not a problem, my absolute pleasure. Justine Hensel is a member of the Oversight Committee for the Jamaica Screen Development Initiative, which we'll tell you more about. She's also a film producer. Hi, Justine, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Happy to be here. Awesome sauce. Um, oh my God, did I just say awesome sauce? <laughs> All right, Wentworth Kelly is a producer, cinematographer, and a board member for the Jamaica Film and TV Association, JAFTA. Welcome, Wentworth, welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, Wentworth is moving from set to a stationary location. Um, and again, we're all actually physically working in the industry. So, you know, happy to see that you're busy, Wentworth. Kevin Jackson is the president of the Jamaica Animation Nation Association, otherwise called Jan. Kevin, hi. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, Kevin is also a stunt coordinator and a director. We worked on a project recently. Shauna Chin is an actress and an activist, um, but Shauna does so many other things. But tonight we'll just stick her in that corner. Is that all right, Shauna? Are you there? That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, also on the panel, we have Juliet Bodley, a.k.a. Julie Mango. Sorry for calling the government name, Julie Mango. Welcome. She's a content creator and a mental health advocate. Thanks for joining us, Julie. Thanks for having me, Sharando. Just to make sure we can't hear you. All right. Lovely. <laughs> Andre Winter is a director and a cinematographer. He's currently in Atlanta. Um, welcome, Andre. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Andre Williams, he is a movie score composer in this moment and many other things in other moments. Andre, thank you for joining us. We will call you Dr. Andre so we don't confuse you and Andre Winter. All right. How is that? <laughs> Not seeing you, Andre. Take a moment and sort that out. Um, and Mike Johns. Mike is a futurist and founder at Digital Mind State. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mike for being a part of this panel. There you are. Can you hear me, Mike? Yes, yes, thank you for having me. Wonderful, all right. So ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we have a very, very esteemed set of Jamaicans on the panel with us tonight. And I'm as proud as I am tonight, as I am when you're seeing them around the Olympics. Because <laughs> say, you know say, with the as a game or with the as a park. So welcome. All right. So let's dive right in um, and talk a little bit about the video that we just saw. Now, whilst I'm here in my capacity as a host, I'm also a film and TV producer as well as an actress. And I ain't gonna lie, I tell on something. When we hear about this hey hi something, right? I freaked the hell out. And why did I freak out? Because I recognized that well what was in my mind is the computers are coming to take our jobs and i don't think i was lying um, so like most other people within this industry i was really very scared um and that happened for a while until i started having conversations with folks like charles who is the ai strategist who said don't be afraid so much as try to learn the technology and recognize how the technology 
technology can help you to do what it is you do instead of being afraid of it. But I know that I'm not just speaking for myself. So I'll toss it out there. Um, and any one of you feel free to jump in at first to say what was your first reaction when you recognized that AI was creeping into your industry? Go ahead, Mike. I want to set the record straight first by saying AI will not take your job. AI will usher in new jobs. And that's a myth that we have out there, especially based on education level that's uh, uh, taking place from Jamaica to the US over there in the UK. Robots will not take your job. They will usher in new jobs. And really, AI to me is this game of do you want to be ordinary or do you want to be extraordinary? You. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like I should have a bop bop. Okay. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, yes. so but let's Mike. use that. Let's use that to set the tempo straight. I work, you know, for my company, Digital Mind State. We're all about humanizing technology into everyday life. I'm not sure if he, anybody on this call even know what a futurist is. So I want to set the record straight, live from LA, uh, using data to charter unknown territory. And we saw that during the pandemic when companies had to make uh, navigate and make the pivot, right? Uh, during COVID, uh, we had the contactless with the cash, the hotel industry, every, all industries were affected. Look at a company named like Digital Mind State. So we got the calls to how do we navigate into this? So I love when Shauna brought me to this topic and I want to make sure for everyone in Jamaica, we understand full force. It's all about le making the leap from ordinary to extraordinary. Yeah, one of the things I think even what you just talked about just now is that it's going to really level the playing field, <laughs> right? And ordinary is no longer going to be acceptable right because on. the tools that people use to create things, um, especially in the film industry, are now going to be ubiquitously accessible to everyone, right? So if you are trying to do something, um, you literally are competing with a lot a much, much bigger audience than you were in the past because it's just so much more accessible. And that's a part of what is scary for me, I suppose, because there was a time when some of us had to go to film school and most all of us on this call have, have either been to film school um, physically or will learn on the job. And now we're being put in a position with AI where somebody with without that kind of knowledge or experience can sit in front of a computer, if you will, using the right AI technology and prompting it in the right way and pretty much do almost anything that those of us who invested in a film school education can do. Um, and that is the part that is a little I like a racking for me. Um, I'll, I'll ask, ask Andre. Um, I know that you recently completed your master's, you know. So, how do you feel about AI stepping into that space? Right. Um, AI stepping into the space, I, I completely agree with Mike. Um, AI is just another tool. Uh, no reason to be scared of technology. I've seen a lot of film who aren't cinematographers, aren't producers, aren't writers, um, investing in their self in, and in their craft and becoming prompt engineers. Um, any, anybody can do it. It opens a lot of opportunities for people. And I look at it like this. If it takes 50 animators to animate something and now three people can do it, that means now that instead of 10 animations per year, it will be a hundred. So now that goes from, that will multiply how many type more people. So th th there'll still be more jobs, more opportunities, more finished projects because of AI. Um, yeah, don't be afraid of it. it. The technology is nothing to be scared of. You can't pull the genie back in the bottle at this point. So yeah, the adapter get left behind like every single technology before. Yeah, I suppose that's um and, and I'm going to be a little cynical. Bear with me. What I'm doing is I'm 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 playing the advocate over here, if you will. Um but if we talk about it from the perspective of the performer, because I will freely and comfortably share this <laughs> Charles <laughs> When we were working on that video that you saw in the beginning, um, I had actually 
done a VO, an option for the voiceover, but Charles works through the night and he needed to make some edits and I am fast asleep. So AI basically took my work and do the voiceover and I don't hear the man <laughs> and the, the something. Him not sound good like how me would and it sound, but him get my work and guess what? It worked because we got the point. So it wasn't even so much about having somebody with a Jamaican accent or having somebody who could deliver um, with more cadence or blah, blah, blah. The fact is this AI dude, take where my work, and in sound just fine. I wish I could have found him for strangling. So I'm going to ask Shauna, like you are over there in LA as an actress. What has the temperature been like over that side in terms of AI and the performer? Thank you for um, the question. You know, I've been sitting listening to everybody because it's always good to get everybody's opinion. Um, and I completely agree with, you know, Andre, with Mike, um, but even to you in an extent, because one of the things Hollywood recently just came off of a huge unprecedented strike. And everybody in Jamaica was like, okay, well, it doesn't really necessarily affect Jamaica. And I was like, no, this absolutely affects us because Hollywood wasn't just on strike for increased fees and residuals. We were also on strike because a huge portion that we could not get um, solidified with the production companies is the use of AI, particularly because one, like Sharando said, there is no use of where there, you know, actually cloning performers you well not cloning in the sense of i'm making a clone of a person but in the sense of they are creating digital performers and as a result then what happens to persons who are not what they say above the line or who is not making the the large amounts of money who you actually you know pay to come and see their face what about actors who are background talent, um, who are supportive talent, who are stand-ins and all these things, where does that leave roles if the AI is able to do that? Just like Sharanda said, a stand-in, an AI stand-in, literally take our work. <laughs> and and a one man to <laughs> Yes. No, 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 no. It's valid. It's absolutely yeah. valid. And so one of the things with the strike was not necessarily it, it, it was trying to find a balance so like what mike said yes ai is here to support but in the other sense it's also from the human perspective you can definitely see where the loophole can become blurred and the strike was a very good example of performers standing up to say all right well this is here to stay but how do we manage that and how do we make sure that we are protecting human performers. So let me ask this question. Um, and I think Charles or, or Mike can potentially answer this question. In terms of legislation and you know the law, that side of it, um, where are we with that? Uh, and can I, as a performer, say um, in my contract for argument's sake, you can not reuse my likeness or you can use my face but not my voice or whatever and i have a legal standing now considering that it is quote unquote so easy to create not just a duplicate but maybe a, a better looking version of me or a bit better sounding version <laughs> of me where does that leave us as not just performers but as um owners of ip when it comes to to legislation and and, and ai um, well, you know, that's one of the things about AI right now is that they're still figuring it out, right? Um, there is literally at this point no formal legislation or laws on the books to govern this. And the EU is leading the chart, charter at this moment trying to figure out what the AI act is going to look like in just terms of what AI is and generative AI, because it's not just something that's affecting the film industry, but it's affecting every industry. And so there is very little um, concrete and guardrails put in place at the moment. 
and another responsibility recently the united states it came out the the white house came out with policies for the federal agencies on how they can govern and what responsibilities that they're going to be placing on those agencies as oversight but in the regular world where we all live <laughs> right um companies and people that make film or you work in an organization there is nothing at the moment that governs that and so the legislation however unfortunately based on what is happening is also leaving leading um, in a direction that is going to favor capitalism. Um, it's going to favor um, the more open approach to AI so as not to restrict where and who is going to be able to access it and use it um, and the potential. And I think out of those things, um, I know a lot of people are saying that it's not going to take your job. It's not going to take um, all of your jobs. It is going to create new jobs. But the reality of it is, it is going to displace a lot of people within the film industry simply because of the accessibility of the tools that can do the things that, you know, you as an actor or a screenwriter or a video editor or, you know, a score musician, you literally now are competing with technology that can probably do similar work to you. But I think at this stage that we are, the important thing is to not be afraid of it, is to get involved, to start using it, figure it out. And I think, you know, uh, Mike John mentioned it earlier, that look at it as something that you need to be a part of and adapt to the change that's happening instead of fighting and pushing back on it. Um, um, Andre, I think it was, go, go ahead, Shauna, go ahead. Um, let me just add, piggyback on what he just said. There is actually, that's what I was just saying here um, in Hollywood specifically, that was the whole reason for the Hollywood strike. So we actually here in California, we have assembly bill 459 that's now in place specifically for exactly what you just said in order to, um, particularly it um, has clause for actors who are able to rescind contracts. For example, the, 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 there's a lot of vagueness in the AI contracts regarding perpetuity, use in perpetuity, use mm -hmm. after death, and how does that affect actors' legacy? So, you know, when we pass on and we go, how does our estate then use that digital, that AI? And so Assembly Bill 459 does address that, as well as in the actual SAG contract so you know everybody knows we're on strike forever and we finally got to a place that we are now you know open and we have come to some resolution but it's still a working that particular ai even though what um it's called employment based digital replica and in that section of the contract it um discusses laws and so if there is any country like jamaica who want to put laws in place to protect their performers assembly bill 459 and the employment-based digital replica in the sub contract those are excellent standpoints to start to look to see how you in your area can then you know legitimize performers work regarding ai that's that was exactly can I, can I so, um, Wentworth and Kevin. Yeah, I was gonna bring up the so, same. Sorry, go ahead, go, go ahead, um, Andre and then John. Yeah, I was and then I'll, I'll pull the other guys in. Um, thank you for clarifying that. On the oh, project. okay, MTP. Yeah, let me know if I can jump in real quick. Yeah, man, go ahead, man. All right, so I'd like to say this by 2030. Uh, let's say, let me see how it go. 60% of the jobs, I believe the World Economic Forum report hasn't even been created by the year 2030. So when I hear what was posed, what do we do about protecting our IP and all this? Here's what I say for Jamaica. We have new jobs that haven't been created. And one of the things that I'm standing for is the fact that you don't even have to look for what America's doing or what Europe's doing. You now take that intel and figure out what Jamaica wants to do and create the standard of its own. 
the IP, what I would almost, the other thing that I would say with your IP is that the future of filming now that I see it, and it's, it's the same way with uh, the music side, and I, I can make this correlation. Uh, in the near future, Shauna, the actress, will lease her IP out. She, she said the word cloning earlier, and I put something in the comment because cloning is happening. The first wave of that is na name, image, and likeness. And you could best believe, yes, Hollywood does have a plan 15, 20 years out. Uh, one of my partners is a futurist for Paramount, so I've, I'm well connected with seeing how we could uh, leverage your likeness and recreate characters using AI, voice, and image. But what I would say for Jamaica right now in the, the next two years, we now need to be focusing, um, I think I heard one of the brothers say, what the EU is doing, right? They were first at it. Uh, Asia became second. U.S. really don't, didn't have an approach, and I think it's still somewhat vague. I heard that word. It's a Band-Aid. It's uh, still a lot of loopholes. That means we're still trying to figure everything out. And so yeah. what, I, what I would want for Jamaica is to be able to take this intel and create its own new norm. And I think we got some people on this in this group that can actually be uh, seeding that. So one of the things is not just to have theory conversations, but afterwards, pen and paper, writing that down, or use your chat GPT-4 and figure out new things that uh, Jamaica's version of SAG can create. And this is the same thing I'm going to say with the Nollywood because we are all that we got. You understand that? Jollywood to Nollywood, that we're all that we got. So it's, it's probably in our best interest. No one on this call had anything to do with AI. That's almost like an occult. In the old days of uh, occult science, ancient knowledge from Egypt and all that, the new version of that is AI. So if we're not uh, all the way indoctrinated with how to create the algorithm and all the AI uh, functionality behind the scenes, then we should be able to create the parameters of how we want to move and how we want to have our IP uh, uh, shopped around. I hope that makes I mean, sense. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm in absolute full agreement with you. And I wanted to pull in Wentworth and Kevin on a conversation, that particular conversation, because yeah. Kevin is the president of JAN, um, Jamaica Animation Nation Association. And Wentworth is a board member of JAFTA, Jamaica Association, Jamaica Film and Television Association. So mm -hmm. they too would be within the realms of the folks who are making these decisions and putting these things together. So I wanted to get their perspective as to how they see Jamaica being a part of this and how they view us actually making those kinds of changes or decisions for our local industry well um if you allow me to go first wentworth <clears throat> just piggybacking on what you guys said um the you know ai is definitely a disruptor it's going to disrupt every industry and uh, with any technology new technology that disrupts an industry there's going to be a very uneasy period. So there are going to be a lot of jobs that are going to be lost initially um, until people figure out how they want to use AI. And then when they do, you find that new jobs are created, like, like John says. You know, the analogy I like to use is like the automotive industry. You know, at one point in time, it would take like 30 men to make one car in a month. And then technology came in, robots started making the cars, people started losing jobs. But then eventually, because now you can create a hundred thousand cars in a month that in and of itself that economy of scale ended up requiring more human beings for other jobs new jobs within the automotive industry so i kind of see the same thing happening where for actors for example yeah initially there's going to be a rough patch uh, but what you're going to find is that because more movies are being made what might end up happening is whereas actors would probably go all right let me stand in line to be an extra and you know hopefully if i get seen enough i'll work my way up the you know you might be you might have a bigger opportunity to have a speaking role or a leading role because so much content is being created and there are only so many actors so they're going to have to pull in on them um with where jamaica is concerned especially where animation is concerned you know one of our biggest challenges is competing with the global north you know, they have hundreds of animators to work on projects. They have access to millions of, of US dollars to work on a project. Whereas in Jamaica, we're looking at a few thousand dollars to try and create, you know, something equivalent with 
much, much less people, like 10 people, 15 people at max. Um, and we don't have access to the same level equipment and training, etc. So it's very, very hard for us to compete. Uh, with AI, that's going to allow us to, to bridge that gap. We'll be able to create products that are on the same level or you know close enough to get us further in the door because Jamaica doesn't have a shortage of stories. We don't have a shortage of ideas. We don't have a shortage of talent, but we have a shortage of everything else. The money, the distribution channels, um, the, 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 the tools, the, the labor. So AI, I see as something that can really, um, you know, get us to that level that we need to, to, to get to. I'm going to jump in. Yeah. So I listen to everybody. Uh, the the biggest thing there's there are some keywords you have to pay attention to when you consider um, AI. And the biggest word, as I had shared with um, Charles over the weekend, is capitalism. That is going to be the deciding factor for a lot of the use of AI. No. A big another big problem for us here in Jamaica is when you're ignorant of something and also because of the level of education, the level of education is also going to be a deciding factor. And when I say a deciding factor, meaning how accepting will persons be of AI? Right? And we are having a big problem already because, you know, you have, for example, a song came out the other day and Somebody they use AI and then they added um, Movado's voice to the song. They added two other, three other, four other well-known artists' voice. They use what the, the same thing and they sing, and the the AI use the cadence and the uh, the vocal range of these artists and saw so they did the singing and everybody was like, no, this is worrying. So of course that opened a whole can of, can of worms that I figure we'll touch on later on, but. Here's the upside of it, and this is when to, the first thing about AI is that we have to start with education. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing we're going to have to really deal with, educating persons. What is AI? How AI, you know, how, how we're going to use it? What is its purpose? How can you use it in what you do? Now, I, I can say that in relation to filmmaking, I see where AI is going to help a lot of filmmakers here because AI is trained on data that is already in existence, which means that you have script from very, very famous um, screenwriters. You have script from very famous directors that is there, and AI has access to it. And based on comparison, you may be able to update, upload your script and get proper feedback on your script, as proper feedback as you could if you could get your film to Christopher Nolan to read your script, mm -hmm. but AI will also, is able to do that right mm -hmm. now. And you are able to also understand, okay, how do I budget a film? AI can give you a proper solid breakdown. Break down my script for me. Does it make sense? Ah, uh, you probably need to check this line here. And so the access that we didn't have before, no we have that access. Andre Winter spoke about having the ability to do animation. One of the things that holds us back is that we don't have enough animators. Yeah. But no. There are these five services that I could list that are able to pull animation from real, from live action videos, and you can attach that to a model. Because there are persons here who are excellent 3D models. The, the deficiency we have is with animation. Right. That is not a problem anymore. What does that mean for the Jamaican film industry? So we have to help persons to understand that, hey, this is not something to be afraid of, right? And I, I don't want to speak, I mean, I don't want to call myself an AI and film evangelist, but because I use, I use, I use it so much in, I use AI in everything I do, from planning a production, to lighting a production, to even coloring, and I'll, I'll touch on that a little more, just about my application and my, how I use it. But on the grander scheme of things, and especially with, what is now happening in Jamaica, where we have this $1 billion allocated, allocated to the film industry, there are, there's going to be a surplus of persons in Jamaica who want to take their, their, um, their screenwriting and also creating pitch decks 
and creating treatments to another level. Yeah. And you will not have, you will not, we will not have access to the persons we would want to have access to. But guess what? The, 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 the work that is already considered top notch is a data set that is used for training for AI. So the AI already knows all of this and the AI yeah. will now say, okay, well, based on what you have here and based on what has worked for the many years, this is probably what you want to consider. Yeah. So we have to know that this is a tool. It's not something we should be afraid yeah. of. I know this is going to go deep, so I don't want to say so much, though, but I'm just saying that the first thing we have to address is, one, when it comes down to policy, it's going, it will come down to, you know, persons like Shauna Chin fighting the system. You know, they talk about being an activist and you're dealing with capitalism because that, that, that's where it is, you know. And again, there's a the line, that there's a blurred line, there's a blurred line, and yeah, we, we, that's, that's where the danger is. That's where the danger is. And education is going to be the thing that that really fixes it for the bulk of the persons, especially in Jamaica. Education is the thing that's going to allow them to know that this is not a very bad So thing. I'm hearing quite a bit here. Um, that's that's interesting. Um, and, and I will say I'm a little bit closer to the line of not being afraid, even though the man take from work. But um, <laughs> no one that bought me, I can't tell. But um, I'm a little closer to the brink of thinking that, you know, this really can potentially enhance production if we're talking about filmmaking in particular and also to put us in a position where there is more work. I'm going to ask Julie, how have you, first of all, what, 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 what is your concept or your understanding of AI? And also, have you used it in creating the content that you that you create to make us laugh so very freaking hard? <laughs> um, so artificial intelligence has been around from from Wapi kill Philip, or before Wapi would meet Philip to kill him. When uh, when we had Lotus One Two Three that took over from the typewriter, that was artificial intelligence. When the, the little pin in Microsoft Word used to come on and talk to you or come up with a notification or if you spell the first spell check that is mm -hmm. artificial intelligence all it means is that it is intelligence that is not human based but it has to be inputted by a human so ai is not a new thing it's like people don't most of the people don't realize that wi-fi stands for wireless frequency if you ask a lot of young persons now they don't know what wi-fi stands for so from that standpoint, and, and you know, knowing that AI has been around for a long time, it has been helping us a tremendous deal from a long time. So it is nothing to fear. It's actually something to hug up and look forward to what it can do. So that is my understanding of it. You know, um, I was an engineer before I went into content creation. And usually we have a software that can design an entire building, a 50 multi-story building, a skyscraper called Stad Pro. No, a human being would have to enter the parameters for the design in the program. And then the program, based on its artificial intelligence, intelligence can spit out hundreds of pages of design. But you know what has to happen before that design goes into the building stage? A human being, a man with a license, has to sign off on that design. You could so. <laughs> So the checkpoints are still the same. We are still in control of what we are creating. So there is nothing to fear. There's only things to hug up. And um, I use AI every day in my content creation. I use a lot of software. I use a lot of apps. And especially when I'm doing mental health videos, I would I use chat GPT a lot, a lot, a lot. And even WhatsApp has an, an AI chat. Like sometimes when we get lonely at nighttime, we look up the AI and say, hey, what's up? And it would say, hi, hi. It doesn't call my name. Hi, how are you doing? How can I help? And I talk to, to the AI and I ask a question. So for my mental health videos, it can write an entire script. And all I do is I read it. Now, who has to fact check that script? Me. Because I can't put foolishes out there. So it's not taking over from me. It's assisting me. So when I read it and I inject the little patwaka AI, I don't catch patwa yet too well. And I inject the patwa in it. Then it's it no, it's no. <laughs> yes. it create that video in, I kid you not, maybe one eighth the time that it would take me to get all the information together, right? And um, 
there are times when I would, when I did the money video, that was AI, you know, putting the dollar bills and putting putting my voice on the faces for the dollar bills. That was Avatarify. It's, a, it's an app that I used. Um, there was another video that I did where I put my my picture. I uploaded it into my computer and made it become alive using an AI software. That was AI. That is something else. So for a content creator and and for me, what what, what I think about AI, I think it's marvelous. And I think it can only do good and create more jobs, create more opportunities for, for people. Lovely. All right. Okay. All right. I don't feel so distressed yet. But just for the record, Julie, <laughs> at night time, instead of a talk to WhatsApp, you can call me. Yeah? All right. So. <laughs> My AI WhatsApp is a mail. My <laughs> you can change my voice. Don't worry yourself. Uh, <laughs> should I should I add that Sharonda, myself, and Julie are in a WhatsApp chat? <laughs> and to as much as we talk, you can imagine that you need more talking, you need AI to talk to you more. <laughs> more. <laughs> Listen, guys, AI can keep your company. Single ladies, right not. <laughs> All right, we'll talk too much about personal business now. Okay, let's pull it back. Let's 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 pull it back. Next thing we we'll start revealing nicknames. All right, so we've been talking quite a bit um, about different areas or different aspects of AI, and um, thank you for that point, Julie. A lot of people just know when we hear ChatGPT, and then we say Sora, we go, "Have mercy, Percy." AI has arrived, but like you said, AI has been around for so very long and we've all been using it to our advantage. It's just that we never put that bigger emphasis on it. We never spoke so much about what it is and what it is doing. So I'm getting closer to that line. Um, I want to pull Justine in. I think she just jumped off. She'll, she'll come back, I'm sure, because we're talking about film and um, how we can use AI to fund Jamaican films. So we have a general sense of, um, or a basic sense, if you will, of, of, of AI. But I want to talk to, let me, let me talk to Andre first, then I come back to Charles, and then I go to Justine. Andre, do you use AI? Sorry, that is Dr. Andre. I mean, I want to confuse, oh. you know. Do you <laughs> use AI at all? Because your, your, your highlight on this call is... Um, that you produce music, you write yeah. score. Um, so do have you used AI at all? Any of that? Because I know that you're a purist. You've learned, yeah. you know, to play <laughs> the piano, to play all those instruments. So how do you draw that line between being that purist and wanting to mm. use artificial intelligence to either enhance or to speed up the process of your creation? Yeah. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah man. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, I, I've been listening to everybody's points, and yes, I am a purist. Um, I, I I go all the way back to playing piano for the what do you call that thing, Royal Associated Boards of the Royal School of Music, London. And I mean, they wouldn't even allow you to play without having the sheet music in front of you. That's how far back I go in terms of being a purist. But I feel like there's some things that we need to differentiate when we're talking about providing music for film or film in general. One of the things I wanted us to consider is there's a difference between doing physical endeavors and doing spiritual endeavors. <clears throat> so we're talking about AI in filmmaking, but I don't view what we do as filmmaking. I view it as storytelling. So when you're telling a story, it's a whole lot different from making a film. And this is why, like Winford, like everybody has essentially said, I believe AI is going to be a tool not just for directors and producers like yourself, but also for musicians like myself. Because you can't fake the emotional impact that good music has on a film. I don't know how many of you have seen that meme circulating on social media where they play the exact same. Kevin, you sent it to me. They play the exact same video with happy music and then the exact same sequence with sad sounding music and the emotional hits that you take is totally different. Um, I just watched uh, Leave the World Behind, I think it was, on Netflix. And for the entire movie, the person who wrote the score was just stuck on this kind of suspense sound, suspense type um, chord progressions. And so even though they were just sitting and chatting in a living room, you always felt on the edge of your seat. So for me, um, I still don't use AI for my music. <laughs> 
So I'll just put that out there. I, I really don't care. I don't use it. But I'm also not afraid of what it's potentially going to do because we use, there's a software called Scalar that gives you suggested chord progressions that you could use next. So you say, boy, I need a sad chord progression here. It will tell you, okay, try this chord progression, but it will never be able to tell me what Sharanda is doing on the screen. And I've seen Sharanda, I've seen Sharanda um, in a play where Sharanda moved me to tears just by acting. No AI is going to be able, in my opinion, to tell me how to make that happen with music. It can just point me in the right direction, and I know we'll use that tool to augment what I'm already doing. Well, <laughs> can I jump in here for a minute? Sure, sure, go ahead. Yeah. So one of the things that I, I you know, I'm really close to the, to the development of models, right? And this is more on the really hardcore level of how do you train the models? How do you input the data? How do you set the parameters in order for it to generate the output? And the scary part here, um, even for me sometimes, is the reality of our human existence that it literally is programmable, <laughs> right? There are aspects of our human existence that you can program and determine the output and almost to the point where it is indistinguishable from whether our human has done it or not. We're almost there right now, right? So we've all seen Sora and Sora is like, yeah, it's, you know, it, it still has some issues. But if you look at where we were like 11 months ago <laughs> and where we are today, it's night and day. And I always go to this particular, um, you know, futurist, I'm sure you'll appreciate this, Mike Johns, um, Ray Kurzweil, right? He is one of the leading thought minds on AI. And he talks about how quickly AI is going to change, right? So we're normally used to things being very sequential, right? Things change, takes a year to develop something. So we think to develop the same thing, it's going to take another year. That's not the case with technology. And it's absolutely not the case with AI. So you're talking about things are happening two to three times faster than they have in the past. And they're progressively and basically exponentially getting faster. So what we think is human <laughs> and what we think is unique to us is not going to be so unique to us um, in the short future. And I think people are, you know, Wentworth mentioned something about capitalism and i think when we come up against our ability to create something that is authentic that takes two weeks to create and i can do it in five minutes and it's 98 percent of the way there um from a capitalist perspective how does that really you know stand up against your you know creative aspirations i'm an artist as well so i get it Right. I don't want someone to go create a painting um, for me. But now I think the pleasure out of it is going to be the purpose of it is going to change. And my viewpoint has always been that AI is going to change humanity in the ways that it's going to really allow us to start looking at our purpose very differently. But it is going to change and it's going to get better and as good as we are at the things that we do. All right, so um, I know that this conversation, we can probably have like a three part to this, but um, I also know that Justine is here to speak specifically to the screen fund um, and she can't stay with it all night. So I'm gonna direct, oh dear, and I guess uh -oh. she can't stay with me longer. <laughs> She'll be back. <laughs> In the meantime, as she comes back, I know, right? In the meantime, as she comes too. back, it was, it, was, it was a really good segue. I know that um, Kevin and Andre wanted to jump in and make a couple points. I'll give you the opportunity to do that until Justin rejoins us. Oh, never mind, guys. Oh, Justin, is. Justin is back. Every time Hold your comment, thoughts. Every time <laughs> She's back. My name so, Rando, it kicks me off. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were just laughing at. We were like, oh, that was I'm a, a, I'm a vice. It's, it's AI, AI. like my voice when Mr. Justin. Um, um, yes. <laughs> so I've, I've been following. So the, the main focus of this really is to talk about AI. 
Right. Okay, go ahead. I think there's a little bit of a delay. So go ahead, Justine. It's fine. Go ahead. Yeah. So I've been following the conversation. Of course, AI is on my mind as it is on everybody else's. Um, my major concern um, about AI is protecting IP, protecting everybody's intellectual property is my number one concern. Um, and I'm going to use that to segue into the film fund conversation because Jamaica Screen Development Initiative, JSDI, which is AKA our Jamaican Film Fund, which we've just launched, which is, somebody said a million, it's not a million, it's a billion with a B um, dollars Jamaican that we are gonna be distributing. And one of the things that is absolutely essential if you're applying to the fund is being able to prove that you have the right to create whatever it is you want to apply to the fund for, whether that is a short film, a documentary, a feature film, um, a series. It is essential that you have the right. So if you are going to use AI to create it, that's fine, but you cannot use someone else's name likeness um, an image to do so without their permission. And I think that the, the safeguards for me as somebody who, you know, creates and has IP, um, that's my big concern about AI is, is how are we going to make sure that people, people's IP is not misused. Um, and I know in terms of JSDI, we're going to be very, very, the evaluators are going to be very vigilant in terms of making sure that people have the rights, that they have a chain of title, that they have a shopping agreement, that they have some piece of paper um, signed that says they have the right to pursue a certain project. So I just wanted to put that out there in terms of the AI conversation. Um, I'm speaking about GSDI because our fabulous film commissioner is actually in Canada right now. Um, so she wasn't able to be on this. Um, so I'm speaking as I sit on the oversight committee and also on the stakeholders committee. Um, and we want people, Jamaicans at home and abroad, once you're over 18 and Jamaican, it doesn't matter where you happen to reside, you can apply to the film fund. And there are different levels of benchmark in terms of if you're applying for development, if you're a first time writer, if you're developing something and you're doing this for the first time, you're not going to be discriminated against as if you are somebody who's asking for $30 million to make a feature film. So I want people to be very clear that there are different pots of money. There's development funding, production funding, completion funding, market attendance, distribution, and then uh, rebate. Um, and we want to spread the word, like I said, to Jamaicans at home and overseas in the diaspora that this fund is available, you can apply, and it is absolutely a developmental fund. Um, I know I kind of went off there, Sharanda, but <laughs> that's where I'd start. No, no, no. That's, that's all right, man. Go go right ahead. Because what is important, you know, um, I would know we're going to connect both of them as in how AI can help you to actually access the fund. But it is also important for our viewers to have an understanding as to what the fund is about. So making it clear that, you know, you, you need to be Jamaican um, or at least you need to be connected to a, 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 a have a percentage another a jamaican has to have a, what is it 60 percent a 60 percent stake in it 51 how much 51. is it 64 51, 51 right majority. um 51 percent stake in it um and also that you can apply at various stages and for different media is absolutely important to know um and uh, what's the website that they can actually go to get more information it is a Jampro website, but if you just put in dobusinessjamaica.com and look for GSDI, you will find the guidelines. And applications right, so are, are now open mm -hmm. and they close at the end of this month. They close April 28th. 
So that is why we are anxious um, for people to know that the fund is open, but closes in a few weeks. Time. I promise you, don't worry. There is a purpose to apply. Sorry, so who's speaking? Wentworth, is that you? No, it's just Charles. I was just oh, wanted okay. to find out the amounts. Like, so how, you know, going to, how much money can people get, right? Um, for for their films. So if you go to the website, it's all there laid out because I'm not going to go through each se section because there are loans and grants and there are different amounts for development versus production versus completion, right? Um, so for example, in development, there are grants for 5,000 US dollars um, for production, there is a grant of 30,000 US dollars. Um, for completion, that's another pot of money. You are able to do multiple applications. So for example, if you are someone who has something at a completion stage, plus a production stage, plus a development stage, you can do separate applications. You can also potentially have a project that you f get funding from development you then pay that funding back so that you get production money you pay that back you get develop completion money and so on so you can take one project from the beginning to the end through the fund okay awesome now my big question now is to um well to charles to mike to wentworth Kevin, whichever of you guys can answer this. We need to merge the two. We are, we are married something this evening. Mm -hmm. So we, we get the general idea as to what yeah. the um, Screen Development Initiative, aka Screen Fund, is about and what it can do for Jamaican filmmakers and ultimately the Jamaican film industry. So how are we going to marry AI and the application or the access to the film the film how do we do that? How we use this thing where the whole are we afraid or right. apparently I'm one afraid I, to help us to gonna, get access to this. I have a burning point. Sure, go ahead, oh, Sean. Okay, go ahead. Sean yeah. is on fire. So I was gonna say, um, and thank you, Justine, for that breakdown of the um Jamaica Film Fund. But how to tie that into the use of AI is Justine said something that was key which is where the loophole that I talked about earlier exists. So currently, as the film fund says, if you can prove that you have the right to create that particular image, then you know, that is the safeguard to ensure that, you know, to, to, for, the, for the way for the Jamaica Film Fund to protect and put some kind of safeguard in place for the protection of IP. However, when you're talking about AI, going back to what we talked about, the creation of the employment-based digital replica of a individual or a human performer or a non-human performer, I can go, if I work using AI, I can create, I can ask the AI to create, say, a dance hall style scene that uses... Sorry, Shauna, can you sit forward a little bit? We're not seeing you. Oh, uh -oh. I'm, I'm pretending like up? I know what the problem is or how to fix it. <laughs> there there you go. <laughs> it keeps going, you know. Well, right, continue, um, continue, continue. No, but what I was saying was, you know, the point was regarding the Jamaica Film Fund using those safeguards in place to protect the IP of you know, marginalized groups, where you talk about AI, a loophole can exist because I can create a non-human performer, I can create a digital likeness of a human performer, and I have the right to use it. Beautiful. However, it then marginalizes the dance hall scene, per, you know, in, in this particular example. If I were a production company that needed to have a dance hall scene, say, the, 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 the recreate the great scene in Belly, right, where you have the all the entertainers who are in this dance hall space so that's what a hundred talent background actors that you can use you can actually use ai you know um mr smart talked earlier about sora you can you know tell these ai platforms to recreate a scene 
with you just have AI performers in the background dancing in a dance hall scene. But who then owns that? As what Justine said, they will have the right to have created that image. Mm -hmm. However, particularly what we're talking about with the use of AI and taking in jobs, it's not necessarily taking job because for the production side, then decreased production costs. However, when you're talking about from the performer side for those background actors, how many jobs are those that are potentially lost? And then who then owns that creation of that AI scene in perpetuity? So then you have persons who can be non-Jamaican who then own a Jamaican style dance hall image who's able to use that ongoing in perpetuity for as long as they can as well as they can access these digital funds, these um, film funds, because the Jamaica Film Fund, and get that loophole because they do have the right to create that. But then to what Wentworth said earlier, as an activist, <laughs> my job is to say, okay, but how does that affect marginalized groups? How does that affect- But, but you said, Shana, that- Yeah, job? but you said a foreigner could do that. We're not funding, we're not, um, it would need to be a Jamaican creator. And yes, a Jamaican creator 51%. could use, a Jamaican creator can use AI, um, but they cannot take that scene from Belly and just splice it in the background of their film. Can they use AI to generate extras? Yes. Um, yeah, that I mean, that's I think every a lot of people are going to be doing that to reduce production costs. Um, and I don't see how the fund could exclude that. It, it would be keeping. I think if the fund tried to exclude AI, we'd be keeping the fund in the, in the dark ages very quickly. Um, so it oh, is sure. like I said, it, it's it's walking that line between making sure we we protect IP but moving into the future and making sure that we are investing in skills for the future. But then that takes us back to the conversation about, um, oh, I'm sorry, these guys are burning. Go, go ahead, yeah. Andre, I'll come back to <laughs> I think one of the most important, one of the important things I wanted to discuss is that from a lot of the understanding about AI is that AI cannot be copyrighted because it's an amalgamation of work that already exists. So you can't own something that is created from something else. And that's one of the biggest things that's coming out of the discussion right now. Um, and I think for Jamaica, that's important because at the end of the day, we're in an industry that technology always comes in, always removes jobs and adds jobs, you know, always looking for new voices. So. There is a statement that I love, and we see it all the time, where real life is better than fiction. AI cannot, as well, Charles, my, Charles has said something different, but I think there is so, something that is genuinely unique with the human experience that right now, AI cannot recreate. And the with the infinite um, probability that an AI can create, I still don't think it can generate what a human can generate and reproduce. But at the end of the day, it's important. And sorry, and another thing is that what Wentworth says is, like, is about capitalism. Capitalism always protects itself. So if you generate a song with Movado's voice that isn't Movado, you can't put that on iTunes because I 100% promise you that Movado's record company is going to come and get that removed. AMTP, um, the producers, studios, they're always going to protect yourself, so, themselves. So if you take a scene from Belly and you put that on a streaming platform, I'm 100% sure they're going to get that project removed. So that is one of my things with AI that I'm watching right now because capitalism will always protect itself. We see it in science. I, I was a med student science you 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 can't steal you can't steal people's ideas you can build on it but you have to give um what's it called you credit. have to give credit to the person and if you're going to monetize that you're not going to be able to so that's 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 where i want to see how ai can change that and or how ai can affect will will get around that because I, I don't see i don't see it happening 
Um, I'm can a, I can I point, jump in? Um, of, con, uh, of clarification, I didn't mean to indicate that using the exact scene from Belly, I meant recreating a dance hall scene. How many film productions, the music and dance hall surrounds Jamaican film? So how many future films will need to use or create a dance hall scene? I just meant similar to, not to use the exact image. So yes, you're correct. They would be against copyright issues if they were to use the exact scene. But AI can create an independent dance hall scene. And yeah. then when they then use that to move forward, they own that image. They don't, they don't necessarily need to come back to Jamaica to use our background actors, to use our dancers, because the AI then learns the intelligence of how to recreate that scene continually. And they actually own that, what Justine was saying earlier. To access funds, which is what a lot of the production companies, you know, are trying to do to try to say, okay, how can we protect ip but essentially these loopholes happen where filmmakers can say yes i have the right to create this image right the question as, is as, does as, it marginalize as, the group because you can clarify this because from my understanding ai, AI only takes from what already exists so no but, yeah, but, so but this, this is where this, this is where the the, the 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 rubber hits the road right so ai is evolving right it's um it's evolving i won't go into the technical aspects of it here but generative ai is the key thing that we're talking about today right artificial intelligence and deep learning and machine learning has existed for some time right your siri and it's programmatic right but it doesn't necessarily generate new content generative ai is the area that we're in right the evolution that's really creating all of this change. And that part of it is where it can now generate things, right? That we may not even have thought about, right? Literally by us asking it, because it could, whatever we can imagine or whatever we can't imagine, it can generate. And that component of it, yes, it is trained based on the data that we provided it, but because it's like, I'll take it like this. Each of us in here have individual skills. We have individual experiences, individual knowledge that we've gained over the time that we've been alive. AI could take all of our collective experience, all of our collective knowledge, and I could be Julie Mango and Sharando and Andre and Shauna, right? And I could say, hey, generate a image that kind of amalgamates all of these people, right? And brings them all together, right? And that is the power of the generative component of AI, which completely changes the narrative about what it's able to create. Because now, Andre might only be able to create something that you can conceive based on your experiences. Now, with the knowledge that AI has, it's going to be able to create content based on our collective knowledge, our collective experiences, and create something that you probably couldn't think about. And I want to just kind of point that out. And that particular um, um, capability of artificial intelligence and to train data is what makes this so scary, because it is doing that now but it's also now able to take the data that it creates and use that data as new input. So now the image of all of us that it created and what it generated using all of our information can now become input, which is not input that was ours. It was input that it generated that it is now using as its own input and that continues infinitely. But we're not talking about 10 people. We're talking about billions and billions and trillions of data points. So I want to just kind of set the stage there in terms of the capability of this tool. But I want to come back and kind of bring it down to more practical levels and talk about the film fund. Right. 
how you could use yeah. it there right yeah that's what i want to bring it back to right. so back. exactly what charles just said exactly what you just said is exactly what i was just saying yeah. on a higher technical level yeah, yeah man um, yes absolutely. and it's and, and it's 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 definitely scary there's no doubt about it but one of the things and i'm only going to make this point quickly because i want to get into how we can use it for the film fund um you know bear in mind like what you're saying sean about recreating a dancehall scene we already do that without ai when somebody goes and says oh you know i want a jamaican dancehall scene for this this particular scene we go and we look up reference images we go and look at other people's images what does a dancehall scene look like and then we start to recreate that even with the bob marley film they're creating the past they're looking at old pictures what sign was there what did this house look like what did this you know and i mean are we going to look at that and go hey they stole that from that picture or they stole this from you know no they're recreating something to make it feel authentic and we do that all the time even as animators you know if someone says to me they want me to create a jamaican market i will be going online looking at pictures and going okay so we have the cartman we have this we have that all right let me add those things in ai is just doing that for me much quicker right um so it's pretty much the same thing anyway in terms of how to use it for the film fund for me i'll tell you how i plan to use it and you know somebody else can jump in with what they they, they plan but for me on one hand i'm using it to create my well to help with my pitch deck because i know one of the, the, the strongest points of a pitch deck besides the wording is the imagery that you use you know the the mood board and uh, you know a lot of times the, if, if the mood board does not reflect the the look and feel that you want people might be sort of aloof about what you're trying to, to accomplish so you know people spend hours upon hours on shot deck or looking through other people's photography to try or, or other people's films to try to find an image that matches what they have in their head and they'll put that in their pitch deck right these are stills from other people's movies many at times um but the thing is you could spend hours upon hours days upon days searching for something and still not quite find the image the composition you want so i may be using ai to actually generate images that will give the look and feel that i want give the composition that i want etc to help me fill out this deck so that the deck impresses people visually um another way that i might be using it is to help me with budgeting you know um you know yes budgeted films before but i'm not a big um line producer expert there are certain things that i may not know how to justify and i may be using ai to say hey i'm creating a film applying for this phone blah 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 blah. I need to create a budget i have x amount of characters in it i have x amount of locations blah 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 what would a budget like this what would a realistic budget like this look like and i would ask it that simply because i'm filmmaking in a jamaican space many many times very run and gun or many many times very what's the word what's the word when you're filming you know with very very little money a um, shoestring budget back, back, micro budget non-existent budget call family and friends yeah, gorilla, gorilla gorilla filmmaking oh, gorilla. so okay, a lot of works. times and everybody here knows this a lot of times you beg somebody for help you out so they will be like okay i'll work for less than what i normally work for right and everybody is chipping in so at the end of the day you know you don't really fully fully have a good grasp of what the budget is unless you decide to you know jot down the actual real costs and then you know um have that as a side note and so on but you know that will kind of help with the budgeting or fast track the budgeting etc so those are two ways i plan to use it i don't really plan to use it for the script writing because i enjoy script writing and one one thing an, um, an animation expert said to me was he's going to embrace ai but he wants to use ai for the tasks he doesn't want to do the tasks he doesn't have time for yeah, and that's I, how i am I, I love script writing so i'm not going to use it to write a script for me maybe i might say hey interrogate the scene i don't really feel good about how it's worded could you suggest some things to me and it will suggest and the thing about ai and this is the last point i'll make is that my prediction is that even though ai is going to be generating a lot of things on its own at a certain point its responses are still going to feel a little bit generic they're going to still be unique but they're going to feel generic and i can tell you as a teacher i'm teaching a film film production program at ue and i gave them an assignment the other day and i said to them hey you know what you can use you can use ai to assist you with sentence structure and that sort of thing but not to do the assignment for you 
And in reading through the 25 assignments, about 17 of them, all of the introduction introductions started the exact same. <laughs> all of them. And I was like, wow, everybody went to the same high school because everybody started the exact same. The first paragraph was literally 90% of the words were exact. And I was like, okay, AI did all of this for sure. But so there, I think there are a few things to consider um, mm -hmm. in, 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 when applying for the fund and beyond is, uh, like Kevin said, you can choose what you use AI to do. My son is in upper six and he sees me using chat GPT to um, do certain things in office. And he's like, but mommy, you're cheating. You know, and, and, and I thought it interesting because I thought their generation would be the one to jump on it. But I said to him, no, I'm not using it to do my work. I use it to enhance what I'm doing. So if you just use it, say, OK, write an article on darkness in Montego Bay. And then you take everything that it says and you just publish that article as your own work. As far as me concerned, that's not your work. That's plagiarism, but you write it, right? But if you take that and you break it down and use it as a starting point for what it is you want, because sometimes the biggest challenge for writers is writer's block. So you're sitting in a place where you have an idea, you want to write about mango or Julie mango. Julie, did it? Yeah. You want to write about Julie mango, the fruit, not the person. And then you can't come up with a storyline necessarily, but you can use AI to help to generate, we're talking about generative AI, we can use um, AI to help generate some ideas. And then you go, oh, all right, I like that one, or I like these three, let me see how I can combine these three. So again, it's about how we use it to help us. But to kind of pull up, pull the reins back, because again, it is very easy for us to, you know, gallop away. Um, Wentworth, are you with us? Your camera gone dark. I just want to know if you're there. Yeah, yes, I, yeah, man, I'm, yeah, because it's dark. I'm almost home, though. So Okay, all right. <laughs> I I, get I, home so I can I'll give you an opportunity to get home then. But, uh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, I'll be, go ahead. Go ahead. But um, the, I hear the conversations about AI, and, and I'm going to speak from a more technical point of view than just as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. All right, so my background originally was programming. So I spent a lot of time. Um, I spent a lot of time in, in software development, and um, so I'm very much aware of Is it just me, or is he gone? No, he's, no, he's, gone. he's gone. All right, all right, Wentworth, I'll give you an opportunity to get home so you, you can speak a little bit more clearly. Um, I want to come back to, Kevin, I heard you, you'll use it for pitch decks um, and, and your animator friends, I'm using it for the things I'm not want to do, and I can work with that. But Justin, you mentioned earlier about IP. How do I prove to you that this is my intellectual property when I'm applying for the fund? You don't know where I get it from. You don't know what I used to generate it. You don't know. How do you know that this is not something generated elsewhere or by some something else or somebody else? How do I prove that this is by some instances? So train. No, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Justine. Mm -hmm. Right. So basically, our one of the jobs that our evaluators are going to do is to track your legitimacy of your IP, right? So there are certain things that are going to be in public domain. If you're writing a story about Nanny or the Maroons, that's fine. If you're writing a story about Beyonce, chances are you don't have the rights. Unless we have a letter from Beyonce saying, yeah, man, Sharonda can't play me tomorrow. It's all good, right? Um, so there are certain things that is going to be very obvious, right? Um, but if you have asked AI to write, help you write a short film about Julie Mangos, the fruit, not the person, <laughs> that is your idea. If you've asked it to write about the person, she has to give you a letter saying that you have that right, you know? So there is there and, and there will have to be paperwork to back that up. Um, and oh. so that that is that is and, and the evaluators are going to look at that, like I said, very carefully. 
Okay, that's awesome. So um, I'm going to give Wentford time to settle at home and come back to him because I know he's very technical. Um, I'm in a I'm in a group with um him and Kevin and some other filmmakers, and sometimes some something when we hear them are talking, they're like, <laughs> me don't know what they matter about. So I'm very curious when he comes back to talk about the DCTL and all of that. Oh no, rest of know we know what they matter about. Miss Miss just there, yes. But in the meantime, um, outside of using, let's say, ChatGPT um, and using um, the, the other AI function to do like your pitch decks and whatnot, how else, um, and Mike and Charles, I'll toss this at you guys, how else can we engage AI to assist us when we are actually applying for this particular fund or any other fund for that matter? Well, I think there are tons of ways to do it, right? Um, I believe it is in the filmmaking process, whether you're trying to come up with an idea or you're trying to write your script or you're trying to figure out what your scenes are going to look like. Um, there are, but of course, ChatGPT and, you know, some other AI tools I'll point out are like Claude are great for generating um, content. I want to say one thing, however, you know, <clears throat> the output of a, um these generative ai tools is as good as your as your prompt right <laughs> um you can just go in and ask it all right you know give me an idea for our film you have to give it more context you have to give it background you have to really contextualize it so that it understands what you're asking for in order so kevin the reason that all of those papers came back the same way is because they just didn't prompt well right now there are a number of other tools that you can leverage um, even on the editing side, right? Um, AI, because it's able to also look at your language, right? So it can listen to something. So let's just say you record something and you are doing a docu documentary and you do a long documentary. You just want to figure out, okay, I just want to get the meat and the crux of this. I don't want to go through the entire footage. Let me just get the you know, audio of this, analyze this, look at it, figure out what the best pieces are and take that part of the content. So there are tools out there, you know, like Descript that will help you to do that kind of stuff very quickly in editing your films and finding the content actually that matters. So it's not just finding the content, but it's finding the pieces that are really useful. Um, and it goes all the way through, you know, Sharonda spoke earlier about, you know, the voice, right? So any of us, our voices, right? You might want to um, record something and you might want to use somebody's voice, but the person may have said something incorrectly in the script or didn't read it a particular way. You can literally change it in seconds and it can sound exactly like the person by training the person's voice. And so some of those licensing issues that Shauna talked about will come into play you know, as we think about how we leverage those things going forward, of course, talked about the Obato song and people using people's likeness of voices, but those things are going to become realities, right? In the way that, and I always go back to capitalism, right? In the, how things that's going to really drive the way things happen. So as you're thinking about the film fund, um, and I'm going to just use this moment as a plug, right? <laughs> so um, talk about uh, we're actually doing a workshop coming up, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and the workshop is going to be this weekend. There's a top left-hand corner, there's a, a QR code there. But it's a workshop that's gonna basically walk everybody through how you can create a movie from start to finish using AI, right? I know Mike, I know Andre might not like that, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to show you literally everything from you know how do you write your script you have an idea how do i flush that out how do you get your scenes right how do you get your acts together how do you you know do you figure out what equipment you need to use i mean the entire thing right and we're going to show people how to do that all the way through to creating the content and you know short of sora of course and sora is one of those things that um I think the only reason that we don't have it today um, is simply because of elections in the United States um, happening this year and the, the significance of the impact of what that could mean if that was released today. But there are models currently existing that people can download on their computers and train and create content that you would not be able to differentiate. And so there are tons of ways that 
you know, you can literally create a movie today that almost looks <laughs> like it was filmed, you know, because of AI. And I, I go back to say that things are moving fast. So the change and the time frame in which the change is happening, you know, so it might look a little bit dodgy today in certain areas, but I guarantee a year from now, it is not going to be anything like what it looks like today. So, um, so just I'll jump in and let Julie Mango jump in. I hear your hand. Up. Right. Um, I see your hand up, Julie, but I know that Mike has to leave in the next couple of minutes, even though we're only on for another four minutes. So <laughs> I, I, I might wanted to share something. So just share Mike and then I'll pull Julie in and then I'll have final thoughts. Guys, it's almost an hour and a half. I see your time fly when I'm having fun. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> I'll just say a couple of things. Um, uh, big up, Charles. I like everything that you said, when you, especially when you reference um, Futurist Ray. The word that you left out was singularity, um, and that's the bigger play there. Uh, everybody should know that the next 10 years is more important than the last 100. So when we talk about education, lock and load right there. What hasn't been covered in this conversation, and it's very important, um, is the new uh, customer, the new fan. And I like to start it maybe by saying it this way. When we looked at the DJ business in the, in the, in the, the music business, once upon a time, I know, especially in the, in the U S it was, um, vinyl DJs versus MP3 DJs. Mm -hmm. And you're not a real DJ. If you're using MP3 computer, this versus the DJ, we could talk about the sound system. Mm -hmm that was trying to test the authenticity of the DJ fraternity. Neither the DJ, uh, the person that they left out was the person that goes to the club. I just want to go to the club after working my 40 hour work week or whatever, and go have, have a red stripe and, and have fun. Didn't care whether it was vinyl or MP3. I'm already involved in projects right now. And I definitely want to link with you, Charles, afterwards, where uh, this workshop that you're talking about, um, no one's talking about the fan. Everybody on this call is seeing YouTube, and now you are into the YouTube shorts. That's already messing with your mind already because your attention span is just further diminishing. So right now for AI, it's very easy to make one two-minute clip with AI versus the full featured film, and we're already getting engaged there. We're in a world where I think it's synthetic writing, synthetic images, synthetic videos, uh, synthetic media, synthetic humans, and definitely synthetic friends. You're already seeing that right now in your uh, social media communities. Um, the last thing that I'll say that, or two last points, everybody's been talking about IP, but I want you to, you heard it here first from Mike Johns, write this down. Don't worry about it, IP. In the next five years, AI will replace the IP. So while you're talking this here shit right now, AI already got another plan for you. So be clear. Holler at me at mikejohns.ceo, digitalmindstate.com, west side, gang, gang. I'm on. <laughs> Not west side. <laughs> yes, yes. West so, Indies so, and LA. How about that? That, that so so better. Uh, yeah, so, so all day, so all day. So, so I wanted, much. what Charles is saying, you guys really need that. We, we all need that. And really the grander picture is this, the, you know, why I really got involved got involved with this is because from Jamaica to the world, the same issue is pressing again. Jollywood, Nollywood, I'm heavy in Atlanta where the, the, the black film uh, capital is, and the same story. The education component is real across the damn board. Mm -hmm. Dig what I'm saying and what I'm saying, can you dig it? So mm -hmm. it's really level up and I, I, the golden jewel of this for yep, absolutely. the country of Jamaica is really to be able, those who sit at the, the forefront, um, Kevin, you know, I definitely would love to connect with you uh, as well, because if where you sit, um, I, ha I know certain people in uh, different offices, because you can now use the intel of what EU, uh, what America has done, what Asia is doing to create your own laws that become the standard that other people will reflect. 
because it's no longer about competition, it's about collaborations. No one has it figured out. And I think uh, the, the, the motherland Jamaica could be the, one, the first to figure it out and disrupt. The same way Hussein Boltz did it is the same way we could do it in the film industry and what we gotta do in the music industry. So I'm here to support, um, we lit, we stay active. And um, yeah, that's it. Um, any questions, I'm here. Yeah, 100% behind um, the collaborative effort. And that's one of the reasons why when I had the conversation with Charles regarding the AI filmmaking workshop, we decided to start at home. Because even though he lives outside of Jamaica, Jamaica Yard. So if we can find a way to give us the advantage by starting with the education so we no longer are afraid of the technology but we embrace the technology and understand how to use the technology to leverage ourselves and our efforts then we absolutely can be ahead of the game so that's really the point of the workshop and of course of this conversation thank you for sharing that um mike i appreciate that julie i know you're burning um then i want to hear from wentworth and then i'll have wrap up thoughts because we're over our hour and a half yeah, this is basically just a wrap up. I want to underscore a very <laughs> nice, lovely point that Mike made that we don't have to be worried about um, IP for right, um, you know, in the next five years, it won't be a thing. And Andre was alluding to it a little bit earlier. So I'm really glad someone said it. Um, to answer the question, there was a question going around, like, how can persons applying for the fund use this whole AI thing? Um, when I was nine years old, we had a project to do to talk about uh, Charlie Brown. You had two encyclopedias, Charlie Brown Encyclopedia and Britannica. Those were competing encyclopedias. And for me to write a project at nine years old, I had to go in the encyclopedia and search. And I spent weeks and, and a lampshade and studying and stuff like that. All AI does, it, it replaces that. It replaces those things, but you still have to go through the information and make sure it applies to you. And so, for example, when the backhoe just came out as a mechanical equipment, so you have the back hole and what it replaced was the man with the hole. Now, did they say, oh my gosh, we don't know how to use the back hole? No, they trained people to use the back hole. So the same man that used the man held hole was trained to use the, the back hole machine. So likewise, persons need to be trained to use chat GPT. Mark it down 10. In the next couple of months, you're going to have courses. How do you use chat GPT? Oh my God, but you're going to see some YouTube ads with people making money, making courses on how to use chat GPT. So with the teacher who had the hundred persons, I don't remember the name, where the Kevin. student probably put it. No, Kevin was somebody saying something else. Kevin was saying it's because they all put in the same. Um, thanks, Kevin. The ads already. Right. Kevin was saying that because everybody was searching for the same topic. They entered the topic the same way. And so the computer will spit out the same. You see why the computer not going to replace somebody's jobs? <laughs> the computer will spit out the same information. No, what people have to learn is to how to learn to use this AI technology. So if there are courses there well, that will teach people how to use um, the, the chat GPT, how to use Sora, then that is what will help. In terms of applying for the film fund, it's just for persons to know how to enter the prompts properly, to, to provide a good proposal, to write a good script. They have to know how to use the technology. The technology is there to help, but somebody needs to teach people how to use it, just like how they needed someone to teach someone how to use a backhoe. And um, I think that's it. Yes. <laughs> good point, good point. Just shout out uh, in the chat, you have Johnny Johnson, Andrea Davis and some others with some really good points that that you guys should also take note. I see that we got a really conscious audience out there as well. I just want to big them up. Yeah, yeah, and they're they're all Jamaicans, mind you, and a few of them are yes. people I know. So this is another reason why I continue to say if we are able to knock heads, so to speak. I mean, just in this group, in this forum, in this space. We can figure out how to be thought leaders. We can figure out how to drive this industry forward from our little but with Talawa Island, if you will. But it's really a matter of connecting um, and picking on brains like these because each and every one of you bring up a very unique perspective um, and putting, finding a way to put that together to make something happen really, really does put us ahead of the game. Um, Wentworth. I've been meaning to ask you, we're over time now, and I'm, I'm just begin, begin a little wrap up opportunity, but I've been meaning to talk to you a little bit more about, from the perspective of, of you being technical, 
because in the group that we have with me and you and Kevin and others, when you talk about using it for the DCTL and those things, me quiet, you know, when they might talk about Glena article and some talk enough, but when they might talk about <laughs> and Da Vinci and I thought let me keep quiet so from your perspective um just give us just just give us a little piece of that and then I'll take a wrap up from 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 everybody um so everybody's hearing me right yeah man we yes. can hear you. okay I'm very sorry that uh, you know I'm just getting settled and I'm no stationary um so again I was going to touch on this education is going to be the thing that is going to propel AI and its usage amongst all people. And um, even for the film industry that I'm very much involved in, um, a lot of persons are, and you know, they are getting, some of them are using AI, they don't even know they're using AI. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in, in the circle that I operate in, um, I'm a cinematographer by day, and by night I am other things. So <laughs> I had said before, before I got cut out that um, initially my, I started off in programming. I was, I was a programmer before. So <coughs> I, I spent a lot of time doing programming before I got into film. No, and I, I saw AI has been something that I've been following for years. When we were talking about, um, you know, using AI, AI had machine learning and all of this. With, and machine learning, of course, is a subset of AI, for those who don't know. And then they started adding little things in software. Now, these software that we're using, for example, in film, they are more, they, they are able to do things that editors know from back in the day who did read to you, you know, just, they'll just sit and like with their mouth open, like what? Because everything is so far ahead. You know, you know Juliet spoke about being able to put her face on her money. I remember, I remember that skit and it, <laughs> And it and it worked. She was able to do that, and she just with her some touch and some click, and this thing fired up, and it was working. And the persons watching it, they're not thinking for a second how she do this. They're just finding it very interesting that she's on the money and she's create she's created this content that is creating this Central you know creating yeah, crazy comedy, and everybody is happy. Yeah, my and, uncle AI, you know, my uncle AI, AI, and, 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 and that's <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, you see, all right, and that's the thing about AI: using it until it becomes invisible. This you realize how it, just through her usage of it, it's just another thing that was used. No, how do we introduce this to everybody so that everybody can understand that this is the way that we want to use AI? This is the way that we want to do to do it. I have kids around me where like, oh, look at this uncle, or look at this dad. I just edited this. And all they did was move around a few things, and then AI is also helping them to cut to the music. And they're doing it, and it's already just a thing for them. And they're talking to Siri every day, and they are just asking, because for them it's regular, it's normal to have Siri. I'm like, I didn't have any Siri to talk to. Mm -hmm. I have to go outside, go talk to my friend and walk. Five houses up the road, go talk to somebody. I don't we had Siri. Mr. Farkinson, the old neighbor across the road with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so no, this becomes a regular part of our lives and we have to introduce it that way as opposed to introducing it as this big giant that you just plant from Jamaicans and everybody like, oh Lord, what are we going to do? And, this big, and then it feels like this whole Armageddon because AI is also used as a fear mongering tool, right? No, and it's kind of, it, it kind of puts me in a place because now you're like, okay, how do you even begin to tell persons how to do this? Because you already start off bad. I use it daily. I use it. Um, I use, um, you know, Sharon is talking about me being technical. That's what I am. One of the things I'm known for in the film industry as being the person who is able to probably explain a few things on one, maybe how soft software work or how you may want to get this done. How, why this camera may work better than this one for this situation versus that situation. And one of the things I also do is um, I have dealt into color science. I know I am coding for color, just for software, for DaVinci Resolve, which is an industry software that they use for color grading. Um, uh, there, there's a section of it that allows you to create your own plugins that requires raw code and meaning that you have to write, you have to write code just to generate that. And what is also happening is that because DaVinci is also equipped with machine learning, which is, a, as again, is a subset of 
of um, AI, we are able to get some amazing results. Now, what I'm doing is a little more complex because that's going right back to mathematics and going back to mathematics that I didn't think I would have any use of. I know I'm using that same mathematics now and I'm having to be like, okay, spending time. But I'm able to now dial in specific colors. One of my concerns in filmmaking is that I feel like sometimes it's getting better that black skin isn't represented the way it should be represented on screen. That's one of my biggest issues with films overall. And I'm like, how can I fix this? How can I create a color, color, well, color tools that goes with the environment in which we shoot in, in Jamaica. Jamaica is closer to the equator. The camera is not going to look the same as it does in North America because of our distance from the horizon, from the, 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 the you know, depending on where we are from the equator. The atmosphere change, the air pressure change. Air pressure does also, air pressure and atmosphere affects how a camera sensor responds. Mm -hmm. The heat affects how a camera sensor responds. How can I fix that? And AI has been able to help me to even write codes, to generate codes, to put in the software, to be able to create these plugins to make so, to, so that persons may have the ability, because DaVinci Resolves can be a complex software, but what I am doing is we'll be able to help persons using DaVinci Resolve to just simplify their process in color grading, because it's really expensive to hire a colorist, right? And it's all a learning process. We are we, we used to have problems with, you know, Jamaica is not a we don't have a filmmaking culture. So shooting in a community might it might mean we don't know that okay the garbage truck is coming Thursday. We know it's come it's supposed to come Thursday. I say, okay, <laughs> I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot. I'm not going to shoot on Thursday. I'm not going to shoot Friday. No, remember we said Thursday. But you say alright, cool. They're going to come Thursday. So I'm not going to shoot Thursday because they're going to come and make up nice. It not come Thursday, like, all right, I'm going to put a come this next week, Thursday. Friday, you and your shoot going on. And what happened? Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Whole neighborhood. Now, what does that mean? Something gets sacrificed. So, now we have tools in these editing software that will be like, okay, based on machine learning, we know what sounds. It is already trained on different sound models to say, okay, this sound is a sound that we don't, that doesn't that is not in the range of a vocal of the of the vocal frequency. So anything outside of that, eliminate it. So now the garbage truck can come any day it want. Because I can remove that garbage truck sound. Yeah. So and these are the yeah. things that you'd have to pay a uh, exactly. sound mixed up overseas yeah. to get rid of. Yeah. And now we have these tools. Da Vinci gave a free tutorial. it is also free in their it is also in their free version and in their paid version yeah. there are other you understand? So we have AI as help has come along. Well, for me, I know I've been using it a lot to do a lot in, of stuff. In fact, Kelly, if, if, the, if the garbage truck show up in your shot, AI can remove the garbage truck. If I want to get rid of the, AI, the garbage shot, I take that out and it will. And we, if it comes Friday, I can pretend that it was another day of the week because they are not supposed to be there anyway so, and I have to take it out. Like so, Kevin was saying at the very beginning though, what is happening is that AI is now leveraging the playing field, particularly for industries like ours who are not so advanced and who don't necessarily have all the effects and, and the studios and whatnot that we'd like to have. Uh, very quickly, Wentworth, I need to wrap up because it's what now yeah. we're, we're running into. Yeah. yeah, I was just saying, that is one well, just final thing, and that's and that's that's the basis of all I'm saying that the tools that we now have in our hands for me, as a very, very technical person, um, for me to be able to do what I can do to also help other persons in the industry, and also just for persons who they want to take their work to the to the next level. And one of our biggest problems, for example, in this case, is storytelling and just how we structure scripts and all of that. And we have this whole, we have different models because people just think about AI and think about, oh, chat GPT. There are so many models. I'm using Google Gemini now, and I, I wish we had time because Gemini is another thing that a lot of persons, if they think Jeff GPT is really great, <laughs> you wait till they try Gemini. Which, so, which... That, and Gemini, finish, finish. so, yeah, so, and that's Google Gemini for anybody who haven't tried it, go try it out.
trust me. Yeah, so, so this this is some of the stuff. Oh, I'm so sorry, yeah. hon. I thought you were done. Real quick. No, Go man, ahead. no. So I'm just no, I'm just saying that we the, the the excuses now become limited because we have the power in our hands because of the 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 possibilities that are now placed before us because of AI. So our limitations are not necessarily limitations anymore. And by the way, AI does not get rid of thinkers. You need thinkers to use AI. If you're going to get a prompt that makes sense, you need persons who are thinking to be able to ask, because whatever you ask, that's what it's going to tell you. If you want something that is deep, you're going to have to ask deep questions. So AI, AI doesn't take away your ability to think. It actually needs you to think to know what you're going to ask and your request. I know. I wish we had more time, but yeah, that's it for me right now. Yeah, I know. I know. Yes, you, you spend half of your time in care. But and 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 a lot of our panelists have to go because we did budget yeah. for an hour and a half. So what yeah. I will do is I will just ask of the other five folks just very quickly give us a final thought. I'll wrap up um, and then we'll take it from there. Kevin, do you want to go first, please? Um, yeah, I just want to say that, you know, like everybody's been saying, the sentiment is the same that, you know, we shouldn't be afraid of it. Of course, there are definitely concerns. Of course, some jobs are going to be lost, like any, any time technology changes, but it's going to create new jobs. And we just have to, the reason why we have to learn how to use AI is because we need to figure out how we going, how we're going to use it in the future. Right. I, I know actors are worried about it. Writers are worried about it, but it's something I learned recently was instead of saying we have a problem, start your sentence by saying we have an opportunity and start when you start thinking in that way, it, it changes the, 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 the picture, you know, because one of the things that a lot of us are looking at is, oh, my God, yeah, I can write a script now. So, you know, the, the AI going to take on my job and X, Y, Z. One of the things you don't realize is that the production companies are using AI to evaluate your scripts, right? So if the if production companies are using AI to have an edge so that they can get through more scripts and root out bad scripts, then you're going to need to use AI to help you get through the door, right? Um, and the thing is, don't, don't feel as if, boy, it's going to take away the experience from you either, because at the end of the day, there's always that anomaly that exists where you know human beings come up with some strange things like the, the example i always use is the movie barbarian nobody thought that was going to be a hit that script got turned down by 10 studios because the the, the, the structure of it was just horribly wrong i watched the movie and i was like the structure of this is really really wrong it resonated with audiences right because audiences minds change all the time so you know there's still space for, for for human beings but don't look at ai as something that's going to replace you look at ai in terms of okay what can i use it to do to make my job more efficient or where is it going that i can apply my skills um you know using ai uh, we just have to just let go of the old way of doing things and just know that there's going to be a new way of doing things when, when ai takes place. thanks okay. kevin i appreciate that thanks dr andre yeah, I mean, for me, I can speak from the point of view of music. And I think probably I'm biased, but I think music is probably the most powerful way of telling a story. It's the most primitive, it's the most deeply guttural, and it's the most lived human experience for the past couple of centuries and probably beyond. Um, I, I, I firmly believe, as I said earlier, that what we're doing here is not filmmaking, but rather storytelling. And I think Jamaicans have a unique opportunity to capitalize on that because we come from a long line of storytellers. Oral tradition is a major part of our culture. Music and communication via music is a major part of our culture. And I think we need to harness the opportunity now to, as I think Kevin said, to become more efficient at our storytelling using AI rather than being intimidated by it when it's really just a tool. Lovely. Uh, Shauna, final thoughts? Um, well, you know, I just want to echo the sentiments that absolutely AI certainly has great opportunities. Um, for me, I think the importance here is to ensure that we are utilizing things that are already in place, such as Assembly, California Assembly Bill 459, 
such as, you know, in SAG after contract, the employment-based digital replica, those things that are already in place, build upon those to, you, to use them to protect marginalized groups. Make sure that we're using AI for the benefits of it, but we're also protecting groups from, you know, some things as, you know, even something as simple as being whitewashed. We had a Taiwanese American model recently was suing a digital company because in using her likeness, then, you know, they kind of made her a little bit more Caucasian than her features were. Wentworth talked earlier about, you know, our black tones are not efficiently portrayed with the use of AI and we want to make sure that we protect, you know, we protect and safeguard those things. So absolutely, definitely, I'm a proponent, supporter of AI. I just want to also make sure that we're using tools to safeguard already marginalized groups. Appreciate that. I don't think there's enough conversation around that. Andre, Winter. Yeah, um, <clears throat> to close out, I think this was a very enlightening um, discussion, lots of viewpoints, and I want to thank you guys for putting this together. Um, thank you, Shanda, for moderating it. Um, with the future of AI, specifically for Jamaica, I would love to see a very progressive plan put together by the government. I wanted to, to see prompt engineering being taught in schools from grade two, grade one. I want to see the future <clears throat> of Jamaican, um, the next set of Jamaicans on the forefront being ready for what the future holds and having the tools needed to do that, not just being left out to learn on their own. Um, and, you know, whoever does that, where it, it doesn't matter about politics or anything like that. It just needs to be done because AI is not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, and if you're still you're still with us and you're interested in learning a little bit more about AI and how it can affect you in content creation, marketing, filmmaking, and so on, well, there you go, timely. Um, the code is on screen. You can scan it and um, hop on, be a part of, of the workshop come Friday and Saturday. It's in person as well as online. Charles, I'll give you the last word before we wrap up. Hey, well, I want to thank all of you for joining us for this um, webinar today. It's timely. Um, this actually is the second workshop that we have done or webinar that we've done around AI. We did one last year um, at the onset, just kind of spreading the word, trying to get the Jamaican community to be aware of what's going on. Um, <clears throat> as I think many of you have echoed already, AI is not going anywhere. This is not a new shiny tool. It is not this fad that is gonna come and disappear. It is the most transformative thing that we are probably seeing in our lifetime. And we've lived, you know, I've lived through the internet um, and we've lived through some other transformations, you know, that we've seen, but I don't think uh, we've seen anything that's going to change every aspect of our lives. And when I say that I'm not leaving anything out, right? You, I parent differently because of it. Um, um, you know, Sharonda came by and we sat down and we're talking and she's shared some challenges that she was having with the script. And that's kind of how this workshop that we put together came about. And in 30 minutes, she, we did something and more and what she was looking for. Um, and so, you know, this is really an accelerator, right? And she might vote it same way. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the reality is that, you know, I want everybody to get on board and the education is the important part. And that's one of the things that we at Metai Block have really taken on is to focus on making sure that people understand it. It's new, it sounds complicated, it's really techie, right? Um, but it's not. It's really simple to apply. Everybody can use it. Everybody can get ChatGPT, go figure it out. Go just try it out, see what it does, right? But if you're in the filmmaking, um, you know, or if you're in the content creation, we have a workshop coming up on this weekend. It's in Jamaica. It's gonna be at the Jampro headquarters in New Kingston. If you're in Jamaica, 
highly recommend that you come out. We're going to walk you through how to make a film from ideation all the way through to dis distribution using AI. And believe it or not, there are tools for every single step of the way. And we're going to walk you through that. So highly recommend, click on, scan that code that's right there to learn more about it. And uh, it's going to be virtual and in person. So if you're not in Jamaica, you're able, able to attend as well virtually because we're going to be facilitating that. But Sharondo, thank right. you for putting this together. And we, you know, um, I'll turn it over to you. Sure. Um, appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time out to be here. For those who had to jump off, really, really appreciate you. And I'm enjoying the energy of Jamaicans who are across the globe, who recognize that we have an opportunity here to do something. I don't hear anybody is talking about an AI, AI in filmmaking workshop of any sort. I was doing a lot of research and it don't exist nowhere else yet. So I'm proud to be a part of this group that has decided, agreed to put this together and to actually sit down in front of our folks and say, look here, the playing field has now been leveled. It is a perfect time for us now to use this to access the Jamaica Screen Development Initiative or the Jamaica Screen Fund. So we have this advantage. Let's use this advantage to step into this space and show them that we can do more than run a major chicken. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Good night. And I look forward to having another one of these. Many, many blessings to you.